But now he is Hollywood's biggest action star. Uh, his hits include The Scorpion King, Get Smart, and Walking Tall. Uh, his new movie, Race to Witch Mountain, has already topped the box office charts and it opens here on Friday. Please welcome Mr. Dwayne Johnson. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now we see why the audience is a little bit younger today. Now. Congratulations on getting to number one in America. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you know, we've enjoyed some, just really some tremendous success in the States, so it's yeah. been great. When yeah. you were doing the film, did you get, because I mean, it's so, it must be so fragmented when you do a film. Did you, were you thinking to yourself, you know what, this could really, we could do real, really well? Well, you know, I thought that you, when you read the script, the script was pretty good. So the script is good, then you got a shot at making a pretty good movie. Mm -hmm. uh, and as we were making it, again, you know, when you had the intention of making a, you know, a, a big adventure style movie, uh, as you're shooting these scenes, you're thinking, okay, well, yeah. we got a shot now, really doing something pretty I saw cool. Saw it on Friday. It's really fun. It's a lovely sort of bank holiday film. Watch with your family, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, sure. It's great sure, stuff. Thank you. Is it a remake? Because I remember seeing the one original. of the Witch Mountains yeah. when I was a kid, but it's not the same story, is it? Well, uh, you know, the the uh, the source of that story is still the same, yeah. where, where you have uh, two teenagers who have these powers and they have to get from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. In this case, uh, it's it's not called a remake. What the term we use now is reimagining. Okay, nice. called reimagining. <laughs> That's a new term. Um, so we reimagined this, um, and it was um, in now in our movie. The stakes are just greater. Yeah. So the world, if I don't get them from point A to point B, which point B happens to be their spaceship, then our world would end as we know it, and their world would end too. Yeah. And frankly, you know, I had never saved the world before in a movie, so I thought, that's absolutely, you know, save the world. <laughs> that's when it got a bit serious. I was like, this is so much fun. Oh, <laughs> well, the world's gonna win. Hurry up, Rock. Um, now, um, you... I mean, it's not like shitting potatoes as you were doing. Right? <laughs> Trust me. Uh, oh, Dwayne, that comes with its own danger, let me assure you. Um, your little girl was a big fan of yeah. the original, wasn't she? She was. Is she, you know, does she sort of make the decisions in, the, in, in your career? Well, she, that, uh, she, 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 um, she, loves, she loves the movie, and, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a proud daddy, mm. and um, I'm great friends with her mom, and, and, and so, for, you know, for me, the idea of, of making a movie that, because all the movies that I make, she can't see, mm. um, so in order for, for me to make a movie that she thinks, oh, wow, this is really cool, and daddy's in it, and daddy's cool, because daddy won't always be cool to her, so yeah. at this time, I'm really embracing this yeah, time. Real soon, daddy won't be cool to her. Well, not that soon, Jimmy. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, I just, I, just, I just guess, like, if your daughter says, no, I really want you to do it, that would just, you, you know, you'd melt like butter. Well, yeah, well, I, that's the thing, you know, there's something, I gotta say, like, being a parent, being a, a daddy, a proud daddy, there's, there, that bond between a little girl and her daddy is so unique and special, mm -hmm. and it's, it's something that's incredible, and I also know that she'll measure, I know, <laughs> You know, the fact that she'll measure every guy that she ever meets against me. So I, it's just really yeah. cool. <laughs> Imagine being that poor girl's first boyfriend. Yeah. Not knowing anything. And then so I went to meet my dad and knocking on the door going, <coughs> well, hello, Mr. Charles. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's talk about your character. You play Jack Bruno, and what I love is the fact they call you Jack Bruno all throughout the That's movie. That's right. Because That's they're right. aliens. They just, they, you know, they don't go, hey, Jack. That's what just... aliens do. Yeah. Um, now, <laughs> he's, he's had a few problems, hasn't he, old Jack? He has. Uh, you know, he's struggled to stay on the right path for a long time, uh, in and out of uh, jail. And, um, you know, what I, I really enjoyed about the movie is, is the fact that it's these kids, not only are these teenagers empowered and they have special cool powers, but they believe in him, even when no one else on the planet believes in him. He's such the unlikely hero to save the world. Yeah. But through a um, little bit of integrity, they finds out he has a little bit of heart, he becomes the but you know, hero. That's nice for you because you must get so many scripts where it's kind of like you're big and you can beat guys up. And it's nice that you're, you know, this movie's a little bit different. You're a little mm -hmm. bit more self deprecative, you know? It's... Uh, well, I, I enjoy that type of comedy. I always think that. I've always been drawn to comedy and the fact that if you can make people laugh and feel good, that's a really cool thing. It's yeah. a unique thing that I really love. Um, and so I can always appreciate that in comedies. But specifically, though, like self-deprecating comedy is my favorite type of comedy. And I enjoy that. Anytime that somebody can make fun of themselves, 
uh, and in the process make somebody laugh with them or at them mm -hmm. uh, is, is a cool thing. At them, in my case. Um, <laughs> with, with it's uh, a healthy thing to have a sense of humour about yourself, isn't it? It's important, yeah, yeah. sure. I think it's vital. Mm. With the special effects, uh, how, did you, uh, how do you find them to work? Uh, I think they're great. You know, I think that, you know, movies today, uh, are, there's, there's some great special effects driven movies out there. So in our case, we don't want to try and compete with those movies. We just wanted to try and infuse these pretty cool special effects along the way. Mm -hmm. But as an actor, um, I, you know, it's pretty cool working against green screen and special effects. I think it, and it has its challenges, but at the end of the day, it's just, it's really cool. Okay. Paul, do you ever think about giving that to a go? Have you, have you ever done the... No, you, not really, no. It's not I, too I, far away from comedy, sure. No, uh, no, I sort of, no. I, I, I directed a, I've done a, I directed a short, uh, a documentary about Alfred Hitchcock earlier in the year, which was great fun. I might do a bit more of that, perhaps, but that's, that's something I would really sort of get my teeth into. I wouldn't necessarily worry about being in front of the camera. I'm quite happy to be behind sure. it, but I don't do much of that. But if I had a chance to do more, I would. OK, we're going to see a clip now from uh, uh, Race to Witch Mountain. Mm. Let's see. Don't worry, I'll get you to where you need to go. We appreciate your understanding. She talks to dogs. Of course she does. You are in way over your head. Thing, right? I think we got you. You crashed, remember? Just saying, um... Woo! That encouraged me! <laughs> <laughs> um, the girl that plays the, 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 one of the aliens, she's incredible, isn't she? She's great. She, she's great. Her name is Anna Sophia Robb from, uh... Uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and Bridges to Terabithia. I mean, she's, she's really one of those really special, unique actresses we'll be talking about for the next 20 years. Okay. Now, part of the story involves UFOs. Mm -hmm. um, you think, you think, I mean, I, I'm pretty open about this whole thing. Do you think they exist? Uh, UFOs? Yeah, you know, I was a believer in, before the movie. I'm certainly a believer now. I, I think that we'd be arrogant to think that we were the only life forms sure. uh, out there. So I believe, but, you know, I'm, I, I believe in the possibilities of a lot of things. I believe in ghosts and spirits and all that. Well, there is a great story where you thought you saw an alien, and then you woke up the next morning and you realized you were just drunk. <laughs> Correct. It's, and, it's a kind of spirit. Yeah. Isn't it? <laughs> and then me and the alien made breakfast together. <laughs> <laughs> just, um... <laughs> Uh, it's a healthy abduction, I like yeah. that. Uh, <laughs> it was a healthy probing. It's an afternoon show. <laughs> yeah. uh, you did a bar. What, what were you doing on, on Saturday Night Live? You dressed up. In a, have we got a shot of that? Can we have a look at it? Because I know you dressed up when you were on Saturday Night Live. Let's see. Uh, was it as a, yeah there we go oh yes as uh, I dressed up as uh, Barack Obama so what happens we did that skit on Saturday Night Live which I hosted about two three weeks ago and um, the the point was if, if Barack got really angry and mad he would turn into the Rock Obama <laughs> <laughs> That's an iconic show, though, over it there, is. isn't it? So when you get asked to do Saturday Night Live, you must be... You know, it was the third time that I hosted the show, and it's, it's such, as you said, an iconic show. And what a great platform yeah. for comedy uh, that you're able to go on there and, mm. and, and give these live performances. And for me, uh, you know, when I, going on Saturday Night Live is a time for me to just have all kinds of fun. So yeah. I told the writers earlier on, I want to sing, I want to dance, and we had this musical Broadway number uh, in the opening monologue. I, and so, to those guys, it's like, look, I could dress up as a Rock Obama, dress up as a girl, I could sing, whatever you guys want me to do. Let's just go have fun. Did you start, when you started out, did you want to be a, did you want to be an actor? Because you, you mm -hmm. I suppose you really wanted to be in, in the NFL when you first started, right? When I, sure, when I first started, well, I played football for 10 years, and I wrestled uh, for an additional six years. So, for me, when I was eight years old, I... So I used to think, when I was eight years old, I used to think I was all these guys. I used to think I was Harrison Ford, Chuck Norris, Richard Pryor, Gene Wilder, and Elvis Presley. I thought I was all these guys. <laughs> you look together. a bit like all of them kind of rolled into one. I kind of do, right? <laughs> uh, but uh, I, the, the notion of entertaining uh, was always interesting to me. So I wasn't, even when I was eight, I didn't, I didn't know I wanted to be an actor. I knew I wanted to be an entertainer. Harrison Ford's the hero, right? 
Harrison Ford was my he and Clint Eastwood at that time were my heroes. You had the great. pleasure to meet Harrison I did, I did. I, you know, I had a chance to meet Harrison Ford. I haven't had the chance to meet Clint Eastwood yet, but, you know, both those guys, I always thought that was a cool thing about their movies, especially the first Indiana Jones is, um, and some of Clint Eastwood's movies where, you know, they were real men mm. who, they were good looking guys, they got the girl, they took care of you, and they yeah. saved the day, and they kicked butt when they had to. That was cool. <laughs> And you know, 